It started as a lovely sunny uh, November day. I was supposed to be at a dubbing session at uh, 12 o'clock. And he was supposed to be at the same dubbing session at 11 o'clock. I went off to the uh, uh, talk show. Just 10 to 11, we heard the noise, and all of a sudden, the, uh, uh, the broadcasting stopped. So we didn't know what was going on. We said, what's wrong, what's wrong? And somebody said, oh, maybe there was a bomb. So I came home, and I turned on the TV, but I'm not looking at the TV. I'm just listening to what they're saying. And I kept ringing him on the, on the mobile. No answer, no answer, no answer. But it wasn't like him. Something like this would happen and he would not call me because I know he would be worried about me. So when he didn't call, I said, there's something wrong. So then I have a very dear friend who lives downstairs. I rang her and I said, could you come up, please? There's something wrong. So she came up. I said, I'm, I'm afraid that something might have happened to Kara. And she said, no, don't be ridiculous. Then I rang the uh, dubbing studio, they wouldn't answer. I rang again and again and again. Finally, I got the chief of the dubbing studio. I said, uh, I, said I cannot get any word from Karam. If he's there, can you uh, give, it, give him to me, please? And he said, oh, oh, he said, um, let me call you back, he said. That's very odd. So I said, all right, so he didn't. Then I, then I started sending him email messages. Please tell Karam to ring me, I'm home. Don't tell him not to worry about me, I'm home. I'm safe, I'm home. So then he sent me a message after a while, said, um, of course I'll tell him when he comes here, when I see him. Then I said, he must have been there, so where is he? And then at exactly 1.35, the doorbell went, went, and it was a postman. So I went to receive the post. At that moment, the phone rang, my phone rang, my mobile. So I said, can you get it, please? I said, who is it? She said, oh, oh it's Kara, Kara, I'm calling. I said, all right, I'm coming, you know, I get the mail and come back. And then I heard her saying, oh, really, what more? At that moment, I collapsed. Then I looked at the television, and it was there all the time, saying that, Famous actor and singer Kerem Yilmazar died in the uh, blast, and they wouldn't. My friends wouldn't let me see him again. I went to the morgue every day, but it seems his, his body was very badly harassed, so they didn't want us to see him like this. I don't live, I merely exist, because half of me is gone. So, of course, I was lost. For one year, I didn't go out of the house. I just stayed there in my black suit, black trousers, black sweater. I just sat there in my armchair, just like this, like a Buddha statue. I didn't do anything, I didn't want to do anything. But after his death, after the whole year, then I started thinking. There were three ways. Either I had to tie a rope around my neck with a rock and throw myself into the waters of, Bos of the Bosphorus, or uh, go to the asylum, or bear it and try to stand on your feet. So now I work as a uh, uh, drama teacher, and I raise lovely students, and they, they give me life.